welcome back to Unladylike Opinions. This is Our Kind of People, Season 1, Episode 2, My Mother, My Mother, Myself. Okay, so the episode starts off with Angie talking on her live, you know, uh, asking, answering questions about hair memories. And she tells about how in Africa, Africa, <laughs> the hair pattern is like a fingerprint. And your crown was your identity and how the colonizers came and shaved, you know, their heads off so they couldn't tell kin folks from kin folks. So we wouldn't be able to recognize our people. So those are the, the ones that survived the middle passenger landed here in a new hair culture and they needed to re rebirth a new hair culture. So, um... They grew their hair back and took what was stolen and used, used our hair to communicate and find more power within the hair or whatever. So her mother told her that no one can take her identity or make her forget who she really is. So she's saying um, all this and their her like they're having split screens of her and Leah getting all dolled up to get dressed for something. So then you see them all at church or whatever. And I mean, both families are at church and then some, you know, little outside people. And it's a little small church, which surprised me for Leah and her family to be at this small church. So it must be like church that they church that they grew up in or something. I don't know. But, um, uh, Angie's aunt is digging in her purse, you know, for some candy, making all types of noise. And then Leah turns around and they look at her like, and Angel, like, it, it takes a lot for me not to tell her ass off just cussing in church. And so, um, she says she can't believe that they share the same blood. And she wants to tell Leah everything her father did. And the aunt says, well, we know the truth. Um, it's too quiet in this church. And we see John Gray up there preaching. Out of all the preachers y'all can get, y'all got John Gray up there preaching. But you know what? I'm gonna let it go. And so, um, they start, you know, hollering their amens at what he preaching and stand up and they start singing. And Tyreek is at church too. And he's over there, you know, peeping at Angie as usual. And, you know, after church, he walks over to her and she asks him if he knew any contractors and he offers his own service because, you know, he is a contractor. And she said she wants somebody to know how to get dirty, get their hands dirty. And he was like, oh, I can get a little dirty. And I was like, I bet you can't. Oops. <laughs> then she was like, okay, you're hired. And that's when Leah's mother-in-law is, you know, watching and she's talking to Leah. I can't remember Leah's mother-in-law name or whatever. But, you know, she's telling Leah that um, Angie... This Angie Vaughn woman is a menace, just like her mother, and she needs to be handled so they can get back to more important matters in hand, which is Lauren and her partying because it's out of control and she ain't got time for Lauren to be embarrassing her, is basically what she said. So, you know, Leah friend them start congratulating her on being head of the father's company, and they want to know, uh, they want to honor her at the Gracie T's Black Woman Business Gala. And Angie walks up while they're doing this, and she asks Leah, can they clear the air? And they looking like, mm. And so Leah is trying to figure out why Angie wants to be a part of his life so bad, especially with the bad experience that her mama had. We all want to know that. And Angie says she wants to provide a better future for her daughter. And Leah was like, this the type of social climber, um, who save money for a summer house and then come here and floss when the families that own this island hold it down all year long. And she was like, they don't have to come for summer, a summer fling with black excellence because they are black excellence. And Angie laughed and was like, girl, we all know who is in the front lines of this country. And they look more like me and my mama than you and yours. And so, um, you see um, Leah talking to Raymond and um, she tells him that she, his, her father didn't step down. She pushed him out and he said he wasn't surprised considering who her father is. And while he is undressing her, uh, he tells her that Franklin Bailout can 
can help his company, Dar Darma, I think it was, I don't know, and get back on his feet. And she told him, like, let's negotiate, you know, I guess, like, negotiate with SEX. Uh, and so he laid her down, and he said he wasn't going to stop until she gives him what he wants. And I believe it, too. And um, you see Angie walking in her house talking about Leah thinks she better than me. And then she noticed that the DNA test is in the mail. And so she tells her daughter, like, read this i can't do it and it's 99 99.9 percent .9 that they share the same father so angie is happy as hell and they have to prove and they have proof and that what she says they have proof and her aunt said that ain't no proof that that just you know that ain't no proof that she took the rap for him with the drug case or whatever. That's just a DNA test. And Angie talking about some she can get in the incubator program. She can get more evidence. And the aunt was like, Leah is not going to let you in that program. And just said, but Raymond will. And the daughter, Nikki, was like, she was the only one that like had made sense. I mean, the aunt makes sense too, but you know, aunt had something. And Nikki was like, None of this is going to bring, you know, Mama Eva back. And we haven't done anything that she asked us to do since we got to this island. And Angie said she is not spreading her mama ashes anywhere near this place. And Nikki said, well, that is what Mama Eve wanted. And Angie said, well, this is my decision. And I'm going to do this for Mama Eva. And Nikki, you know, storms off. And um, she was like, I'm doing this for us. <laughs> yeah, right. So Raymond is on a yacht talking to uh i guess an ex-business partner and he's telling him he's getting his company back and teddy teddy isn't it teddy which is leah's father isn't an issue anymore and the friend tells him that it's a fan it's fantastic because the quarterly report shows that darman is on the road to recovery um recover what they lost last year and Raymond said, nah, Playboy, it ain't no we, you lost it. And he was like, we, um, you almost destroyed a 120 year old company in one summer. He said, you ain't never, uh, the friend was like, you ain't never gonna let me forget that. And Raymond was like, he is hell bent on rebounding Dormont and he gonna make adjustment to the friend's involvement. And, you know, his friend was like, um, it was their great grandfathers that put their names dupont and Harmon, into a partnership and made Darman, and they made one in every generation after that and he and they made one and every generation after that wanted to continue to do the same and he said they was like brothers growing up and they did everything together. And he was like, and you want to blow this up and forget? Raymond said he remembered him having to bust his ass and him, the friend father let him use the corporate credit line like a, you know, personal bank account. And he never had to take life serious. And every time he messed up, he never had to suffer any consequences. And he was like, this fool going to say, maybe I was a lucky kid. And Raymond was like, you are a privileged white kid raised in America. America and, he, and he had to do everything perfect just to survive we are not the same and over you know at franklin's office you know leah is telling um angie because you know they was at the franklin office i guess making fl floral arrangements for the um charity that they doing and um she tells angie just because it's a charity don't make the flowers look cheap and i'm like girl Angie better than me. She want to fit in so bad. They do not like you. But then Leah's daughter, Lauren, walks in. I mean, drunk boots, baby. She walks in and just stumbling and was like, why the light's so bright? And then and, and, and they was laughing. The other ladies that were gassing Leah up all the time was laughing and said, what a train with. Look how short her dress is. Which the dress wasn't that short, but you know, she's 17. Um, The girl, um... She was like, um, Leah just lost her, uh, Leah said, um, Nikki, I mean, Lauren just lost her best friend and she's still in the hospital. So show some class. That's what she tell the friends. So, um, 
Then Leah gets on Lauren about partying all night and missing church and being hungover. And she says, you know, she got a photo shoot coming up with Forbes and she thinks, you know, Lauren should come and have lunch and they can talk. And Lauren tells, well, you may not like the things that I'm going to say. And Leah was like, that doesn't mean I'm going to ever stop loving you. And, you know, Lauren runs off because she got to throw up all that liquor she done consumed. So Leah grabs Lauren's phone and she kind of like goes through it and she see pictures of her and Taylor. And, you know, as she keep going through the pictures, the pictures get more intimate. And, and she was like, just looking in the air and then the ladies just start clapping. So yeah, my daddy interrupted me. So the ladies just start clapping out of nowhere and they were saying how proud they are of, um, of Leah and when Angie just jumped up and says that they should change the name of the gala and on a sisters that never was recognized was never recognized before and they look at her funny but Leah calls out we should call it black diamonds and all the and for, black diamonds for all the women in you know that's not only in business but in other ventures or whatever and um Leah asked Tracy where, you know, the girls were, they was feeling Leah idea because it was Leah. But Tracy, she asked, Leah asked Tracy to deliver some flowers to her mama. But she was like, you know, my son has riding lessons. And Leah walks out like, oh, whatever. So Angie was like, I'll do it, you know, and you're going to owe me. And so then as Angie is walking out, she runs into Raymond. And she wants to talk about, you know, her application in the Franklin incubator program. And he tells her that, um, he saw it. He saw her application and he liked how hungry she is, but she got to show them that she's on the map already to show she is a solid business investment. And he will make sure that they review her application, but he ain't going to make no promises. So she was like, she, um, trust herself and she going to prove her company is as solid as it comes. And so then she, you see her arriving at the assistant living place. And I guess that's where Leah's mom is. And as she's walking in, I can't remember if she said something or not. But as she's walking in, Leah's mom said, hmm, the little bitch came to visit me. Hello, Leah. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> Rose say, you must need something because you never come here to visit me. And Angel was trying to say that I'm not Leah, but you know, Rose obviously is suffering from some type of like dementia or something like that or whatever. I don't know. But um Rose asks um Angie, who she think is still Leah, can she make her up? Cause she gotta be good looking for the Gracie's his tea that's at four o'clock. And Angie then asks and Angel was like, yeah. And she started, you know, doing her hair. And she asked, do you remember the Gracie T's Grand Illumination Ball in 1984? And Rose said, yeah, that's the year that I got inducted into it. And Teddy got inducted into the Kingship Program. And Angie asked her about the arrest of Evelyn Vaughn that night. And Rose grabs her hand and said, did your father send you here to humili humiliate me? And she, because she still think it's Leah. And... Rose says that Evelyn was her friend and worked for her for two summers. Then she reverted to a stereotype. She said she told Teddy that if he lay down with dogs, you come up with fleas and you got a bastard. Damn. She said that the woman wasn't fit to be a mother no more than she was fit to clean the bottom of her shoes. And um, she told Angie that Evelyn gave up the baby for $50,000 and that a woman named Deborah Ann Washington brought the baby home from the hospital and Angela was like that's not true that's not true and um she said Evelyn Vaughn has nothing more it's nothing more than a broken down money hungry drug dealing con and Angela just sitting there crying tears flowing and she just rushes out and Rose said Leah you help your father put me in here you got to get me out and I'm like dang what in the world that dog gonna pop a poke and so Angie tries to get info from the hospital to see when her mom was le was released, but they hang up on her. So then Tyreek walks in and he shows her the blueprint for, you know, her place because, you know, he's the one that's going to um, be the contractor for her uh, salon. And he asked her to go to dinner with him. And she was like, I'm going to a party, but 
you can come with me and I can I can pick you up. And he tells her that there's another room near the staircase. And he goes over and they, you know, break the wall and and there is a new room. And so she starts going through the stuff and she starts crying. And she was like, this must be, you know, my mother's stuff. And she sees, you know, this dress and this necklace. Or whatever. I think it was a dress. I don't know. But, you know, I'm like, she probably going to put that on at the party or whatever. That's what I was thinking. So then you get to Leah's Forbes photo shoot. And, you know, she um is talking to Lauren. And sh she was talking about how she was nervous for finally coming out at her father's shadow. And Lauren was, like, shocked because she was like, you know, you never get nervous. And she was like, of course I do. But then, you know, Teddy walks in and um, Lauren, you know, flies over there and runs and hugs him. And Leah asks if she can speak to him alone. And Lauren was like, okay. And she walks off. And he tells her that he isn't there to cause any trouble. He just, they wanted him there to do an interview on her and possibly take a picture or whatever to talk about her rise to power. And he said he taught her everything she knows. And here she is on the cover of Forbes and the power and power is the reason why. He said his father made it seem like he was making his power look like a white white man's, but he couldn't tell him why it was wrong and why it was wrong to sometimes dabble in the gray. And Leah says, Gray, like you cheating on my mother. Well, let's get it started then, Leah. Come on, shots fired. So she said she remember going along with him to a business trip in Boston. And she was eight years old. And they went into this small apartment. And she remember a young girl standing out, outside crying in the rain. And her father's hands were shaking. And he looked shook as they drove away. And he tells her to enjoy this treatment because you never forget your first. And he walks off. He said he ain't got time for none of these. So Leah picks up a bottle of, um, I think it was hairspray mist or something. I don't know. And she sees that it's Eve's crown on it, which is Angie's company. And she was like, um, this heifer is everywhere. So then you see Leah and Lauren just walk clean up in Angie's house. And I'm like, damn, they got to kill something. And you know, um, she was like, um, Leah said, I heard you've been talking to my husband about the business incubator. So I came to see your business for myself. She said she doesn't know how much, no, pretty, no much about her business and asked her what part of Boston she is from. Obviously, she is over there trying to get information, um, to, to, cause what she said to her father about, you know, seeing Angie, you know, as a little girl. So obviously she's trying to put pieces together. So she asked her what part of Boston she was from, and she said the east side, and she was like, do you know it? And Leah said, why would I? And so Angie looks at Lauren and was like, you know, hey, Lauren, um, how are you doing? And she tells Lauren that, well, Nor Lauren didn't speak back. She just looked stupid. And she tells Lauren that Nikki told her that Taylor was stable. And Lauren jumps up and was like, Nikki sees, Lauren, uh, Nikki sees Taylor? And she said she be she been at the hospital every day since you know the accident. And Leah jumps in and says Taylor is a party girl. Let's not talk about her. Maybe this will break the whole Taylor has on Lauren. And I'm like, dang, just throw all the blame on Taylor. And so Lauren said, what hole? And Leah said, I saw the pictures in your phone. The way you look at her. And Lauren cuts her off and say, like I love her because I do. And you told me you would love me no matter what. And here I am. And Leah says, yeah, I love you, but I can't support this. And Angie tries to tell her, you know, mother to mother, what you say to her next matters. And they have a little moment. And, um, then, you know, Leah leaves. So Angie runs to her phone cause it started ringing and it's the hospital calling. And next thing you know, you see her walk in on her aunt and say, Oh, my mother gave me away and her aunt said it was only for six months. And the reason she did that because she had a breakdown. Angie said, no, nah, she sold me for $50,000. And she started tossing around all her mama's stuff and was like, is this what she bought with it? Is this what she bought with it? And Angie said all this time she thought it was her father that threw her away, which, you know, he did. But her mother threw her away too. She feels like a fool for trying to save and defend her mother's name. And the aunt was like, 
she couldn't do right by your father. She couldn't do right by you. Your father wasn't answering the calls. Work had dried up and a rich white woman that wanted kids offered to take you. The lady paid her, but her mother couldn't sign the papers and she took back she took she took um the girl named Angie back, but she kept the money. And she said, you know, she couldn't get the money back because the aunt had already used it because she had gotten into some trouble. And she was like, Leah, mom, Eve, Evelyn had to work for years to pay back the woman all the money. I don't think she paid back all the money. So that's probably going to come up later on. So she tell Angie, she, she tells Angie, she is more focused on getting in with the Franklin than she is her mother's last wishes. And if you don't scatter them ashes soon, I'm going to do it my damn self. So Angie apologizes to her aunt and says um, she got to get into the Franklin to find out the truth about what happened to her mom. And her aunt says she going to meet her at the, um, at the party with her daughter because she doesn't need them in the back seat when she go pick up her thing. And uh, I started laughing and Angie, you know, looked so good in her dress. Like I like the dress when they was on, you know, the little red carpet, I think with her and Tyreek or whatever. And um, you see how nervous Angie is or whatever, but then you see Leah and, you know, her husband and they walk in and then you just see some noise out of nowhere, a little commotion going on. And it's a small business owner from Boston. And I look, I say, oh, man, that's, that's, that's Aunt Bam. And if you know Tyler Perry plays, you know who Aunt Bam is. And that's what I'm going to call it because I don't remember what her name was on the show. I think it was Bessie or something, but I don't know. I remember next time. And so she is. She says she's happy to stand in between Miss Franklin DuPont and the woman, the woman behind the Forbes color and cover. And Leah was like, say what now? And she was like, yeah, um, I was mentioned in the, I asked her, you know, speaking of Aunt Bam, I asked her to mention me in the style by to create some buzz. And she looks at Raymond and Raymond was walking out the picture when, um, oh, her name Bernice, walking out the picture when Bernice, um, said, stay right here with your fine ass and um uh, raymond walks up to angie and congratulates her on getting a mention in the force and she tells him about her product makes women feel and believe in their power and he said he gonna um have his office call her tomorrow for an interview and she over there happy just dancing when tyreek walks up and you know take her to the dance floor and then angie and uh, Angie's aunt and Nikki walk in and the aunt said, look at all this tall, dark chocolate, fine glasses of water over in here. And I was over there dying laughing. That aunt is a mess. And Quincy walks up to Nikki and she uh, said he was glad she was there because ever since Taylor's incident, she been quiet. The, aunt's whis the auntie whispered to Nikki and said, kissing cousins is not godly. When I tell you I was over here on the floor when she said that. And so Nikki tells him that, you know, she think they can be friends or stay friends or whatever. Trying not to give it all away. And um, Lauren just walks up and say, so you told my mama about me and Taylor and um, you don't belong here. And she, um, she said, you don't belong here unless you want to serve me a drink just like your grandmother. And Quincy tries to tell Lauren to leave it alone. And Nikki said, uh-uh, no, no, no. I don't, I don't um need no one to protect me. I got receipts that belong that I do belong here, just like you. And I am your, and just when she was gonna say that I am your cousin, you know, Angie um snatched her up and you know asked her, you know, what are you doing? And so you see Teddy and Leah walk out on stage, and Angie, you know, just looks stuck like. She don't know what to do. And um, he up there um, honoring Leah and he says he is not retiring. He's still the chairman of Franklin Holden. And um, she is still his second in command. And Leah's sitting there looking like, what? And he grabs her hand and they walk off. 
he tells her that she should have looked closer at the papers she has on him because they implicate her husband as well. And if you try to take me down, you're going to be taking him down too. And he told, um, to, uh, he told you that he was better at this than he was. And he just proved it. So she, you know, Angie up there looking stupid and she started running behind him and she didn't say anything to him, but you know, Tyreek walks up and she's just looking shook and he asked her what's wrong and she tell him to leave her alone and next you see her thrown up in the ocean and her daughter nikki comes and you know and holds her hand and she tells nikki that she couldn't muster up a word to him and then you see um Raymond is going off on Leah saying you were supposed to help me get my company back and she said you know give me some time because she think he she thinks she will run Franklin Holden and he tells her you think Teddy gonna give you this company give you control of this company because you think you his queen just like tonight he told you you're nothing and only his princess and he tells her to wake up because she living in a fairy tale she think he gonna ever let her have that company. And she said, don't be cruel. And um, he said, well, don't be gullible. Baby, let me tell you. I got right when he said that, like he said it to me. And so Jack walks in and asks if she is all right. And he says, Raymond doesn't mean what he says. And he is lucky to have Leah. And he just kisses her. And as he's kissing her, and it looked like Leah was, you know, shocked too when he kissed her and lauren walks in and you see her chase after lauren because lauren took off when she seen it and runs and she runs lauren runs into a uh raymond and he said baby you're shaking what's wrong and leah said we can talk about this at home but then the police show up looking for lauren and he they say taylor is awake and says taylor said lauren was the one that pushed her and Lauren looks at Nikki and was like, you were there, tell them, tell them. And Nikki was like, I didn't see anything, which she didn't because, you know, she walked up after the fact because she heard her hollering and she asked her what was going on. And so um, they arrest, um, well, when, she went to, uh, Nikki said, I didn't see anything, Leah tried to roll up over there and Nikki said, uh-uh, you think twice before you roll up on my baby girl. I know that's right. And they arrest Lauren for attempted murder of Taylor. And Angie goes to see Tyree to apologize how she left him at the ball. And he thinks she might be involved with Teddy because he was like, you ran up behind him. What well, you know, what's going on? Y'all got business y'all involved? And she lied and was like, I was just asking him about business. And it was cool seeing how he honored his daughter. That's what she said, just over that line. And talking about um she questioning everything now that she knows who her father is and Leah is just walking down easy street but she never tells him that they got the same father so Tyreek said he he knows the Franklin for a long time and his father even worked for Teddy and even died for him and so he tells him that his father was the head of security protecting Teddy and he ended up, you know, getting caught up and caught a bu bullet in the line of duty and said his father was his world and Teddy made sure he was straight. And just said, just like that, he took care of somebody else's son and not his own. And she caught herself and she tried to leave and Tyreek was like, you, he used to get mad at his daddy for dying on him. And he said, I don't know. He used to get mad at his dad for dying on him. And he said when he floated, his daddy used to talk to him. And he tells Angie, she need to learn to float. And he takes off her, um, I think it was a dress, nightgown, something she had on. And then, you know, they start kissing in the pool or whatever. And Angie, her aunt and, and Nikki start spreading the mom's ashes and she quotes you know my angelou's poems um i rise and leah walks in on her daddy and she tells him he needs to have um first year associates 
So Leah tells her dad that, you know, they need first year uh, associates on Lauren case and she doesn't want to let her down again. So he was like, he'll handle whatever trouble that, you know, she got herself into like he always do. And he tells her she need to be more concerned about protecting their legacy because her memory was right about Boston. And, you know, he was saying goodbye to a woman named Eve and he chose Leah and Rose over his affair. And he said, um, there is no denying that Angela is her sister. So she was like, so you made a fool of me again. And she flips the chest uh, board over on his desk and he tells her, okay, now you got that out of your system. Um, we can uncover, we can um, put this to bed and start a real chess game before everything in our family is uncovered. And then we see her aunt, her Angie's aunt, burning a picture. And I'm like, what is that? And then Teddy just walks in and you know, the aunt pulls out the gun and was like, you know, get out. And he says, is that the way you talk to your old friend? So, Auntie, you been lying the whole time? Girl. Well, that was the end of the episode. And this is my review of the new show, Our People. And it's kind of getting good. I hope it stays good. Thanks for watching. Like, share, comment. And I'll talk to you later.